Hello, Tom Lebecki here with the latest edition of the Armchair MBA. It's going to be a quick one. A um, few things first is I want to give a shout out to the sponsor of the show, JSB Capital, um, for your business financing needs. They also do um, commercial financing, equipment financing, and they also do uh, personal loans. If you want to be an affiliate, they could also teach you how to do them. On the commercial side of things, there's no licensure needed. So you take a course, he does it at a reduced rate to offer to Armchair MBA viewers, and you can set up your own loan shop and you can be an affiliate with him after that point, or you can go on your own and have the same connections to his resources as he does. Also, we have another sponsor, and this is interesting. So I got this sent to me, and this is eatable. <laughs> it's popcorn infused with liquor. So this is uh, popcorn with sangria. Popcorn, pop the salt, and tequila. Um, this one is rosé all day. Uh, uh, pop and rosé all day. This one is whiskey on the pops. Obviously my favorite. You guys know the whiskey guy. And then lastly, I got one to try out. Poppy Caesar. I don't know what kind of cocktail that is. Oh, I think it's with uh, rum. So it's, inf it's actually infused popcorn with liquor in it it's insane it's, it's amazing and and i got got a whole bunch of them sent to me um they are crafted locally sourced and non-gmo so people that care about that stuff um it's a great to give as a gift um great to have available um as a nice resealable bag for freshness and um I, you know i didn't have that much of them um because i'm i'm on keto but got to give you guys a shout out. It's amazing. It's innovative. Um, they taste great. I don't know if they get you banged up. I don't have that many of them yet. So obviously proceed with caution. They're obviously not for kids or anybody under 21. And check out Eatables. All right. So first part, a little disappointed, but it is what it is. The Cohiba Bahikis that were given to me, and I suspected it, but I wanted to be cordial. There's a guy who owns a really high-end salon on the Upper East Side, and he charges like $2,500 for hair extensions. So my fiance, I said, he charges $2,500 for hair extensions. That sounds kind of expensive. According to her, it's not. I, you know, living in a bizarre world, but hey, God bless. So market for everything, right? Do not knock the hustle. Anyway, it's a high-end hair salon. And sadly enough, they are Fimta also known as fakes, okay? So I'm gonna do a quick uh, bit on how to tell Cuban cigars if they're fake, okay? Now, there was some old school ways that I knew. I didn't wanna push it. Maybe it was a newer box. Maybe they do new things. Maybe because they're semi allowed in the US or somewhat allowed in the US, they maybe change their production modality. But there's some things that hold true and then I research and some are newer. So number one, I was always told the little label, the tax label, I knew this from before. And I, I, this is just the old school way, but I was told it has to fold at the shield. In this case, it does not. Has to fold at the shield. Number two here, the label, although it's affixed nicely and it looks pretty good, it was kind of flimsy here and it could happen in travel, it could happen, et cetera. But just again, it adds all to the larger body of being fake. This is pretty conclusive on the bottom here. doesn't have the date stamp. I noticed, again, got as a gift. I didn't want to, you know, look a gift horse in the mouth, brought them home. They smell fantastic. That's what's weird. But just because they're fake doesn't mean they're not good cigars. Um, but in this particular case, they're just not Cubans. So no date here from the government. And then this is the biggest giveaway is the Hicho in Cuba has to be embossed. Uh, this is not. So when you run your fingers along and there's not a groove, it's fake. This was just literally stamped on by like a rubber stamp or a presser, but not embossed. Bossing is very expensive. Um, they also did not emboss the Cohiba. Let's just say at this point, you have almost a, what they call a good fake. It happens pretty often. It smells great. It's a shame. The labels are not affixed correctly. They're kind of loose overlapping. You are not going to see that with a handmade Cuban cigar. So it's affixed loosely. It looks almost as if it was put on by hand. 
and you can't really see it, but it's just not lining up correctly. Um, this is actually a good fake label because a lot of the labels have a little bit of a white because it's hard to get to bleed. Um, but this is a good fake in that sense. And another one is you notice here, I can move the label up and down. And another reason why it's fake. So Jason and Jason Capital came over last night. We tried them. And then the last part is I knew they were fake when I smoked them. I was trying to keep an open mind. I was like, hey, maybe these are real. Maybe it's new school. Um, so the last part is the draw was very tough. I don't know if you guys know, but the draw is very tough. I got a, um, a little wooden stick, poked a hole in it. I'm stubborn. I wanted to smoke it, even if it wasn't real. Um, so I did smoke it. Um, I was going to give it a 6.8 because it is a decent cigar, believe it or not. Um, but since it represented them as a fake, call it with a ball lands on the NBA score, final 5.8 for the fake Cubano. Um, Jason couldn't even finish his. He just, the draw was not there. The draw was tough. Um, what happens is it's supposed to have long filled tobacco. This probably had short filled the binding and the filler probably was stuffed in. Again, these are not real. They're just looking to get a, a money grab. A lot of times these are um, done by organized crime. Now, I don't think Italian mob, but I think more Mexican and, and the like. Uh, so nevertheless, uh, these are fake. Great show tonight coming up. Got uh, Benny the Brooklyn guy at eight o'clock. Um, I was going to do it as a um, I was going to do it as a recording, like a normal episode. But then I'm like, you know what, should I do a live? So drop a link below. Should Vinny and I go live tonight at 8 p.m.? Or should we just uh, keep it casual? We're going to probably do a little wine and cigar tasting together remotely, have a good conversation about mental health, and learn more about Vinny Bracco, the Brooklyn guy. Uh, Ramona Rizzo, she's going to be on Monday. She had some scheduling difficulties. She's hoping to do her today, uh, the interview, but she's going to be on and available on Monday. And I want to release who it is. I'm going to be interviewing Anthony, I'm sorry, Anthony, made it uh, Antonio Nicasso. Antonio Nicasso has wrote over 30 books. He is the worldwide leader on Andragada, Comora, La Cosa Nostra, and Canadian and Italian mafia. The worldwide expert. Um, he sits on panels that uh, Gratelli, who's a guy who's trying to put away the Mancuso family in the Calabrian Maxi trial, he sits on panels with him. This is the worldwide expert. It's a big deal for me in my career. Um, I'm going to do my best to do it justice. I'm going to prepare for the interview, which I very rarely do. Not that I don't respect my other guests. It's meant to be casual. It's meant to be kind of on the fly. That's kind of the genre of the show. So Antonio Nicasso also drop off, uh, drop below any questions you have for him. Um, I'm interested why Nandragada is not as big in the U.S. Uh, maybe it is, and we don't know. Um, or maybe they're just really into the distribution end of narcotics trade. And um, I'm just super fascinated by it. As we all probably know, Italians, LCN, um, Nandragada, and Komoda, they kept it real for the most part. They're still strong, still formidable, international worldwide. You got uh, Sacra Corona Onita which is at Apulia, and then you even have some subsets like Lestida and some others in Sicily. So, so Italian organized crime is still very strong, and some of which is believed to start bleeding back into the U.S. Uh, to kind of fill the vacuum of local Cosa Nostra here in the U.S., which we cover, I think, fairly extensively. So stay tuned for that. We've got a great uh, stuff coming up for you. Vinny Bracco tonight. Um, I'm going to line up probably my next cigar for uh, do probably a live review on that. 5.8 on the fake. It is what it is. Such is life. And I'll see you guys later.